10,000 mattresses. A warehouse full. And it was, oh, we don't know what to do with these. Nothing gets thrown away. Zatari refugee camp in Jordan. About 80,000 people live here. This is essentially a city that sprung up in a very short period of time. The areas here are so small and the soil is so salty and we have not enough of water. It's all about giving people the ability and the resources to be able to grow food. It turns out that what they thought was a problem, like mattresses just stacking up, was the way to make everybody their own garden in the refugee camp. <laughs> polyurethane foam mattresses. I'm Tony Ryan, I'm a chemistry professor at the University of Sheffield. They've got to be disposed of somehow. There was no disposal mechanism. And I just started a PhD student working on how to grow things in polyurethane foam. <laughs> so I sent the most excited text message home. I know exactly what we can do. We're going to be able to grow stuff all over. We'll be able to turn these beds into green beds and everyone can have their own garden. I've been to a landfill site and seen uh, a tomato plant growing on an old sofa. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I knew it would work. So here we are, we're underneath the uh, car park at the University of Sheffield. Here's some foam in a box where we can make any atmospheric condition, any temperature, any weather. The local farmers have taught us so much about how to grow things hydroponically. The foam just holds the plant upright, so you make the water do the work. All the other functions of the soil come from the nutrients in the water. You can use 20% of the water that you'd take to grow something in the ground because the water's not running away, it's being kept where it's needed. The challenge is, if you're a farmer that's used to growing things in soil, being asked to grow things in foams, a big ask. Hey. Hi. It was taken up by Abu Wazim and he made it work. He then became the ultimate advocate because he is a Syrian farmer and the other Syrian farmers believed him. Oh, wow. He's taking us for the hydroponics. Amazing. Look at this. He's so lush. <laughs> they call you the green hand man. Can you tell me why that is? Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Look at this. This is one of the, just one of the plants, and there's a whole, I don't even know how many are here, hundreds. And old coffee cup, bit of foam, there's the old mattress, and that just pops in there so it can get all its nutrients. It's amazing. Everything's recycled. My name is Mayar Lanani. I'm here for University of Sheffield to help the refugees. Today we're going to teach a new group of people about the hydroponic and we're going to apply the thing with them so they can know how to perfectly apply it at home. How have you seen people respond to um, this? When you bring up an old lady who spent her uh, whole life in farming in the soil, it's hard to convince them that this idea do really exist. But now when they see it, they become so excited to try it by themselves. Everybody gets a kind of a starter kit. Yeah, they yeah. Starter. They all got all the starter kit and they take it back with them for home right. so they can start their own. Right. So there's a lot of interest. Yeah, it's, it's quite crazy. Yeah. It's spreading so fast and everybody is getting so interested. They used to farm a lot back in Syria and they are looking forward to have it again. What's your favorite things about this project? Uh, having the old ladies so happy for having their homes green again and feeling so comfort comfortable. Teaching something new for the new generation to have their sustainability in the future in case anything bad happens. More than a thousand people.
people have learnt this technique now, so we're just on our way to meet uh, someone who is now growing food hydroponically in his home. Hamadi Mahfouz. Hamadi Mahfouz. No. It's very good to meet you. It sounds like the garden has made this more of a, a, a real home. Is that is that fair to say? How much pleasure do you take from, from the actual growing of flowers and, and vegetables? He's growing Oh wow, your home is full of lovely green things. It's beautiful, it's, I mean, it's a full garden you have there. Oh, they all help you garden. 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 That's brilliant. That's brilliant. We've learned as much back in Sheffield in our research from what's been happening here as the people here have learned from us. We just kind of gave them one thing and then they've made it flower, forgive the pun, <laughs> to so many things that have benefited all the research we do. We'll be taking learnings from here that in a suboptimal environment to optimise for high yield and low water use and low nutrient use and low energy use. So you mean what's being done here with old mattresses could be kind of an innovative step for urban agriculture around the world? Yeah, and, and uh, if, you can, if you can make it work here, you can make it work anywhere. I think there's a lot that anybody that lives in an urban environment can learn from this project. It's all about taking value from things that can be reused and recycled and making the absolute most out of a very limited space and really limited resources. And as urban environments face a changing climate and those limited resources in the future, that's a reality that we're all going to have to face. So this, this is lunch in Zattery. That salad was all grown in the hydroponic garden here. And it's delicious, and I shouldn't be talking with my mouth up. <laughs> you are OBE prof. How important is this work in, in the context of that whole career? Well, I think when I retire and I look back on what I've done, the thing that will stay with me most is this. <laughs> oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've done all sorts of things in my life. I've worked on synchrotrons, neutron scattering facilities. I've been in CERN. But the thing that I think I will treasure for the rest of my life is the difference we've been able to make to people's lives with a tiny little bit of science and a whole load of local ingenuity.